So the samurais would easily risk their lives to obtain tea utensils. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I have had hundreds of requests for a video about tea ceremonies, and I'm happy to announce that I'm going to finally start making them. Some say that tea ceremony is at the heart of Japanese culture, with the teachings of hospitality, respect, and Zen philosophies. As a student training tea ceremonies in Kyoto, I can definitely say that this is true. Every time I take lessons from my master, I'm always surprised by how deep the culture is. So today, I will summarize the 400 years of Japanese tea ceremony into just five points. By watching this video, you will be able to deepen your understanding of tea ceremony culture and enjoy the tea ceremony related videos I'll be making in the future. At the end of this video, I will also talk about how it is practiced and trained today. So let's go to the next video. Before we start talking about how the tea ceremony began, we need to understand the history of tea itself. Matcha tea was first brought back from China to Japan by the Buddhist monk Yosai in the 12th century. He was studying Buddhism in Japan. He was studying Buddhism in China, and there he found out that the Chinese monks were frequently drinking tea as a kind of medicine. The nutrition and caffeine contained in matcha helped the monks to endure their hard trainings. After coming back to Japan, Yosai became the founder of the Rinzai sect of Zen Buddhism. It is said that Yosai cured the shogun, who was suffering from a hangover by serving him tea, and the effect of matcha was proven to the authorities. This is how matcha quickly spread out through Japan. By the way, matcha has saved me a thousand times from hangovers too. So I can personally assure you the effects. By the Muromachi period, Drinking matcha also became popular among aristocrats and samurais. They would decorate rooms with Chinese paintings, books, and tea utensils, and enjoy luxurious tea parties for fun. In these times, being able to take part in these parties meant that you were a rich and powerful person, and it was somewhat a way to show off your wealth. It was like throwing a party at a sweet hotel with a bar counter. And having a top chef cooking for you. There even was a game called Tocha, which means battle tea in Japanese, that took part at these parties. Sounds cool, doesn't it? The participants will drink different kinds of tea and guess where each tea was produced at. However, this game eventually became related to gambling and was banned by the government. This culture still exists today as a way to train your sense of taste. I have tried it once before in Kyoto myself, but it's very difficult. Finally, the model of tea ceremony that we know today was born in the 15th century. A Buddhist monk called Murata Juko and his apprentice, Takeno Jo, started and spread the idea of wabi tea. Unlike the luxurious and gorgeous tea parties in the previous age, the new style of tea ceremony was simple and sophisticated and was aimed to reach the enlightenment of Zen Buddhism. Wabi tea matched the needs of the samurais, as tea ceremony became a time of peace for them, who are constantly under the tension of possibly getting killed in battle. It became a short moment in life where they can forget. About their pressure as a warrior and put their minds in peace. By the way, wabi is a very difficult concept and it's impossible to explain it in just a few words, but it expresses the virtue of Zen. I personally like the translation of imperfect beauty or the beauty of imperfection. The wabi tea was completed by the most famous and important man in the history of tea ceremony. Sen no Rikyu. 
even if you forget everyone else that I talked about today. It's best you remember this man. The main styles of tea ceremonies practiced today were all created by his descendants or apprentices. As the relationship between the samurais and the tea ceremony culture grew deeper and deeper, there were two very famous samurai leaders who used tea ceremonies for political purposes. They were Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the two of the famous three heroes of the Civil War era. Sen no Rikyu, who completed the tea ceremony, worked as an advisor for both of them. For the warlords during the Civil War era, tea utensils were not just practical items, but a way to appeal one's social status. Those who possessed valuable utensils were thought to have great power. Oda Nobunaga, the samurai leader at that time, took advantage of this and ordered his subordinates to thoroughly purchase the specialties of tea utensils. He gave the collected specialties to his subordinates, who have made achievements as rewards, and also gave them the right to hold tea ceremonies. Nobunaga used the culture of tea ceremony to have better control over the people by stimulating the people's obsessions and desire towards it. So the samurais would easily risk their lives to obtain tea utensils and the right to hold a tea party. This may sound absurd, but Oda Nobunaga succeeded in establishing this culture. This is why even today, expensive tea utensils such as bowls can be as expensive as a million yen or even more. Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the next samurai leader, built the golden age of tea ceremony together with Sen no Rikyu. He held tea ceremonies that were deeply linked to politics, such as the tea ceremony that welcomed the emperor, the Osaka Castle tea ceremony that gathered daimyos in one place, and the large tea ceremony where townspeople and even peasants were invited. Tea ceremony was no longer a place to just enjoy tea, but it became the center of politics, culture, and religions in Japan. After the death of Sen no Rikyu, multiple styles of tea ceremonies were developed by his descendants and apprentices, which still exist and are practiced today. Even when the samurais were gone after the Meiji Restoration, respect towards tea ceremony was rooted deeply into the Japanese. So the officials of the new westernized government protected and passed down the culture of tea ceremony. Studying tea ceremonies first became a school subject for girls, and eventually tea ceremony, which has long been limited to the privileged class, became a culture enjoyed by everyone. Today, just like you can go learn how to dance or play a musical instrument, you can start training tea ceremonies almost anywhere in Japan. It is seen as a way to learn manners and traditional culture, like flower arrangement and calligraphy, or just as a time of peace to get away from the hustle and bustle. However, it is a little sad how there are less and less people training in tea ceremony. There was a study done by a company that runs an application for students of tea ceremonies. They found out that the number of people training in tea ceremonies in 2018 was about 2.2 million people, but this is about half of what the number was 10 years ago. The cause of this decrease is due to the participants aging and failure to train and to take in younger people to participate. More than half of the population are 50 years old or higher. I am 26 years old, and people are very surprised and sometimes happy that I'm so young but training in tea ceremonies. Lastly, today's conclusion. I briefly introduced the history of tea ceremony in Japan. Matcha tea was first brought into Japan from China by a Buddhist monk called Yosai. It was originally a kind of medicine taken by monks during their training. As the culture spread out to the samurais, they started to hold luxurious and gorgeous tea parties, and sometimes 
even use tea for gambling. However, there were some famous Buddhist monks that created the idea of Wabi tea, which is a simple and sophisticated form of tea ceremony that reflected the way of Zen. The concept of Wabi tea is the tea ceremony we know of today. Sen no Rikyu, the most famous person in the history of tea, worked with two powerful samurai leaders at that time to spread the culture of tea for political use. Tea ceremony was no longer a place to just enjoy tea, but was at the center of politics, culture, and religion in Japan. Even after the samurais were gone, respect towards the tea ceremony was deeply rooted into the hearts of the Japanese. So government officials protected and passed down the culture. Eventually, tea ceremony began to be practiced by commoners and women. Today, anyone can go train anywhere in Japan as you can learn how to dance or play instruments. Unfortunately, the number of people who are training in tea ceremony is gradually decreasing. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you learned anything new about Japanese tea ceremonies, please hit the like button to let me know. And it'll be great if you can share this video to your friends and family. And my goal is to achieve 100,000 subscribers by January 2022, so your help is what I need. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Hello, arigatouzaimashita. Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching my video and welcome to the Omake Talk. So because I made a video related to tea ceremony, I wanted to um, answer to one of the requests I have received through the comments. Someone asked me to demonstrate um, the correct way to whisk matcha, make matcha, you know, with a, with a whisk. And I have to explain that I can't. I can't do that, nor, for example, take videos or photos of myself um, doing the procedures of, you know, the tea servings or delivery, the tea. I can't do that because I'm prohibited to do that for my master. Um, making a video about history, I think um, this probably won't be a problem. I haven't actually checked with her. I'm, I'm, She's a very strict master. Um, I'm trying to aim to become a professional tea master. So to just a person who's um, training tea ceremony for fun, she's just a very kind lady. But to me, she is very, very strict. And, and that's, of course, that's... Um, she's doing that, of course, as a part of kindness, you know. She needs to be strict in order to fully teach what tea ceremony is about to me. But, um, so I'm not allowed to make tea outside her tea room. We call it her tea room, which means where we do the training. And I'm not allowed to post any pictures of myself doing anything with tea ceremony. But I, I thought, you know, making a, the video about tea ceremonies or talking about the history or culture of it, you could, I, I have, I took my, re, uh, my sources from the books that the headmasters have published. So I think, I believe this wouldn't be a problem, but anything else from that, I'm not allowed to do. Um, so I hope you can understand. If I'm able to do something like that, like demonstrating how to make matcha or anything, it'll be probably maybe like 10 years or something once my master gives me permission to do it. In tea ceremonies, just like in the Dan system, the ranking system in martial arts, there's a system as well where you go up the ranks. But it's going to take a very long time, actually, to, to, for me to get there. But though, although I am, uh, I do have a lot of other tea ceremony related videos in plan though. I w am willing to explain about what happens during a tea ceremony. A full tea ceremony actually takes four hours. I'd like to talk about what's going to be happening there. I'm going to be talking about the philosophies and the rules of the tea ceremony. And I want to talk about the relationship between Zen and tea ceremonies. And yeah, I, I like that. I like to talk about the tea utensils. So I have like um, about five to ten topics just about tea ceremonies I have in mind I like to talk about. So I hope you can look forward to that. All right. So then everyone, once again, thank you so much for watching my video. And I hope 
you can look forward to the other videos too. Thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimashita.